also watch TV and you know, we're not steady and, and, and then I like to enjoy also also with my friends. Also if you go outside anywhere like in the LA area you'll notice that unlike maybe like a couple hundred years ago, California is pretty diverse and has like a lot of different people from different countries now living here all together. Like especially in this school, like if you look around. So that's true, but even though that we may have become a pretty diverse state and country, for some reason, mostly in the media, it doesn't seem to really reflect that that easily, mostly with the casting. And I think that lack of diversity in casting and media and television in the US can have negative effects on everybody. So, anyway, so for example, according to an Indiana University study from about a year ago, a lot of children are usually end up watching TV when they're by themselves. Also, the survey says that children cannot help but compare themselves to what they see on screen. So I'm sure a lot of us, when we watch TV, we tend to compare ourselves to what we see. Like, when I was little, I used to watch like Power Rangers and compare myself to like how, I, how good I, would, how I could be if I walked out of the fight. <laughs> but really, that wasn't the case. Because, I was not good at karate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the problem with most, with most cast, they, or at least with television, is that when children tend to watch it, usually, I mean, it's not universal, but for the most part, in most cases, they also see that the most people that are successful tend to be mostly Caucasian, while minorities that are, usually in, are usually on the side or like cast as stereotypes or as antagonists. An example would be from this example from Media and Minorities, which is a book that I use, is about Asian Americans. Because so many of the movies with Asian Americans, actors are about Asians and not Asian Americans, they're looked at as foreigners. So this kind of also brings up the stereotype called El Peril, which is usually, for example, when Asians are presented as antagonistic. I guess a good example would be last year's remake of Red Dog, which presented North Korea attacking it was Washington. It was a remake because the original had the Soviet Union, but it was updated. So my problem is, is that when most people watch movies, what they think about society or like the world tends to be affected by that. And most everyone will have a stereotype, because always stereotypes of every different race, but when you have only negative ones and no positive ones, it tends to be unbalanced. For example, after Red Dawn was released, a lot of people on Twitter, like online, tend, would re wrote tweets that tend to be very biased against Asians. It, it was very negative. It was like just about how the movie inspired them to be patriotic by going to attack Asians, which is something that today would not be a good thing because attacking anybody is wrong. Another problem with, that, with lack of diversity is that there's also this thing called whitewashing, which is technically usually when so, an ethnicity of a character or someone in history is changed to usually be Caucasian. An example would be the film Argo, Ben Affleck's character was originally meant to be Latino. And you could say that there weren't a lot, a lot of you know, Latino actors, but as of 2011, a statistic said that 16.7% of the U.S. is Hispanic, which means that the group, there are a lot of opportunities to cast people, and by changing the ethnicity of someone, you also you deny opportunities to people that might actually want to act, because I'm sure there are a lot of people that are Latino that would like to be acting. Additionally, they said that since the film is all people would know about the effect because it's based on a true story, it robs Latinos of a historical figure they can see as a hero. Also, from a business perspective, diversity does tend to affect how people watch ratings. There was a survey done in UCLA, they reviewed the 2011 to 2012 season of broadcast television see how ratings did with cast with or more with minorities. So in the 2011-2012 season, ratings peaked 
among shows that were 51-50% minority. All ratings that had only 10% minority went down and had a drop. This was also almost similar to cable television. So, okay. so to clarify, the problem is, I'm not trying to say that one is better than the other, it's just that I think that we live in a pretty diverse country now, and since people tend to get what they think about the, the country from media, because we do watch the news and we watch shows, I think it would be better if we tried to be more diverse in the casting that we use in shows and films get to help reflect the diversity in our country. All right, Neil, I, I thought the introduction was fine. Uh, I'm sorry that you couldn't beat up the Pink Ranger when you were a kid. That's a little tough. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever the evil villain was that week, you know, uh, which was usually probably not an ethnic character, right, because they had giant things coming out of their faces and they were from aliens. Okay, just double-checking. All right. Uh, <laughs> The proposition is in the opening. I do think you could highlight it a little bit more, but I heard your I heard your propositional statement. I do think that you want to make sure that it's clear to everybody that that is in fact the purpose of the speech, and that's why uh, you need to signpost it a little bit more. But it was there. The contents of the speech are not really previewed. You need to lay out a structure for us, so it's going to be easier for us to follow. But I think we got a pretty good sense of what the controversy is early on. Uh, in the body of the speech, you do have some signposts, but they're not always labeled as claims. For instance, uh, there's an issue about uh, stereotyping, there's an issue about whitewashing, and I'm not exactly sure what the declarative sentence is that goes with each of those points. You need to be a little bit more explicit about that, but I did, like I said, I was able to pick out some structure, but the inferences need to be sharper. Uh, the evidence that you cite, you've got some good examples that you point to. There's a little bit of statistical information that talks about uh, the nature of the audience, for instance, and what it consists of. Um, it seems at times that I was get, hearing information that sounded like it was being quoted, but I didn't get a source citation. Other times there were source citations, and usually when you referred to a study or a statistic, you gave me a citation, but there were several places where it sounded to me like you were summarizing an argument that somebody had made, and uh, I'm not sure if it's a quote or if it is your claim, and that's a little confusing. So you want to be much more explicit about how you cite your information in the presentation. The other thing that happens, and I think uh, we've had it in, in several of the speeches tonight, is that we're getting paraphrases of what somebody has said rather than exact quotes, and you want to stick with the exact quotes as much as possible. Um, I thought that you did a pretty good job explaining a couple of things. Oh, there was one thing that I, I did want to jump up about and ask about, uh, well, I don't want to ask because that makes it sound like I need an answer right now, and I don't. But uh, you've got this information about Twitter and how the Twitter sphere went crazy after Red Dawn, and are all these people out there who now want to go out and shoot Asians because of Red Dawn? I never heard of this. I don't know where you came up with this. And if you've read it someplace, that's an example of something that needs to be cited. I'm, I'm not saying it's not true, but I never heard of it. And I saw the damn movie. You know what a waste of time that was. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> You know, what you need to do, though, is be a little bit more consistent. Like I said, I, I think sometimes you cite the information, and sometimes you're not citing the information, and, and it's being passed off either as true or, or a premise, or it's an argument that you're making when it really is some other information, and you need to be consistent about that. All right, thank you.